Hi, are you looking for a budget gaming laptop capable of playing all of the biggest games? Then I highly recommend you watch this review of the Lenovo Legion 5. This is my 17 inch version which I purchased for £750. It's got an i5-11400H with 6 cores and clocks in at 4.5GHz. I opted for the 17 inch monitor which makes it a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier than other smaller screen gaming laptops. And the modest 512 SSD will likely need to be accompanied with a larger M.2 expansion. The 8GB DDR RAM runs at 3200 MHz and has a spare slot for an additional stick of RAM. So what does this gaming laptop offer for gamers? It's got a built-in RTX 3060, it digs out 144Hz at 1080p on its 17-inch screen. And it has a full QWERTY backlit soft touch keyboard plus numpad. All the buttons are very responsive and easy to type with or game with. The integrated battery has a 7 hours and 45 minute lifespan, which will give you a solid 2 to 3 hours under a solid gaming load. The laptop in its default state has quick restart times of less than 15 seconds. But what games can this run? It would actually be quicker to ask me what games it cannot run. I've tested the default laptop settings on 3D Mark and it scored well above average. The I Can Play website stated that every game they test against can run 100% on this laptop, including some of the very demanding games we have these days. I was asked by one of the viewers to cover the feasibility of playing Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on this laptop. And if you can excuse my handling, because I was using an Xbox controller via the inbuilt 5.1 Bluetooth system, it ran very well on both high and not too bad on ultra, but I found that high gave more solid FPS in built up areas. Extremely poorly optimised games like EA Sports PGA Tour had to be turned right down, but once I did that, they ran well enough. It's an albatross. I mean, all day long, every day. Yes, birdies and pars and bogeys, but almost never an albatross. And there it is. And Chelsea with the ball again. Well, they couldn't keep it. Danilo Pereira. 
Hakimi. This might have potential. Delivering it into the box. And there it is! A two-goal cushion now. And just look at these fans. The trophy coming their way. Well, here it is again. And what a perfect cross into the box this is. Just inviting someone to attack it. And then the movement and finish just makes it look so easy. That's a really good goal. Almost every game that I tested worked without issue, except for TT Island Man 3. But to be fair to the game, this was on day one launch, and optimization patches may well have improved things since then. Other high speed games seem to run much better. So what about VR? Using Steam VR Testing Hub, I can confirm that this laptop is 100% ready for VR. In fact, it exceeds expectations. Although there is a caveat here which I will tell you about at the end of the video. Yes, look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. Oh, I am so sorry. Beautiful. Probably worth a hundred at least. The laptop comes with a 720p camera and it has a security slider. got four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A slots, one micro SD card slot, HDMI 2.1 and RJ45 Ethernet cable at one gigabit. It's got two Thunderbolt 4 USB C ports and a combo audio jack. In order to open the laptop and get to the internals, you must first remove the eight screws from the underside and then gently ease the plastic clips apart. The form is well laid out and easily accessible with the two main fans located towards the front. There are a lot of different sized screws used throughout so do be careful to keep track of each of them. The integrated battery can be upgraded but I don't have any specifics for the performance improvements that that might bring. You can see the copper coloured protective cover in the top right hand corner for the main hard drive and Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi. Next to that is the RAM cover, and on the lower left is the expansion slot for an M.2 hard drive. I opted for the high performance P5 Plus from Crucial, it was on sale, and it's very fast and capable hard drive.
In order to gain access to the RAM, you will first need to carefully prise that square protective cover open. My initial idea was to purchase a second identical RAM stick, but unfortunately I was unable to find one, so instead I opted to go for two 8 gigs with the lowest CL rating. I expected that the extra RAM would compensate for the slower CL score, but I was wrong. The single faster RAM definitely outperformed the 16 gig of RAM, so I'll be changing this in the near future. In fact, I've already found a second-hand stick on eBay, which I've ordered and should be here in the next couple of days. Installing the M.2 hard drive was completely straightforward. However, I did have to update the BIOS before the laptop would correctly recognize both RAM sticks together in dual channel configuration. So there are a few really important things I need to discuss and some minor things like the difficulty opening the laptop screen with just one hand, something which isn't really a big problem and may well become easier over time. The biggest caveat though has to be the default Oculus Quest VR performance. Initially my VR experiences were very poor indeed and looked like this. It was quite surprising to me, but there appears to be a known bug with Oculus and gaming laptops which causes the Oculus VR runtime to latch onto the built-in graphics, presumably Intel based, instead of using the dedicated graphics card. In order to fix this I opened Nvidia Control and directed Oculus VR runtime executable to use the GTX 3060 for every operation and this was an instant and complete game changer, with even the most demanding of VR games suddenly becoming completely butter smooth and considerably more enjoyable as a result. Now the 17 inch monitor laptop is a personal preference, there are a mind blowing number of configuration variations available and a wide range of prices to match. I grabbed this whilst it was on sale, so you're going to have to do a bit of shopping about to get as good a deal as I did, but there are definitely 15 inch laptops available for even less than what I paid. And as you can see from this extra little snippet, it's very easy to hook up a bigger monitor, or in this case, a 120 inch projector, and play your games directly on your living room wall. The lag that you see here is from the onboard camera. It's not present when playing, but a limitation of OBS Studio whilst ut utilizing the built-in camera. Now if I can make one recommendation to you, I would say that a 500 gig hard drive is simply not enough to really be useful if, it, if you want to use it as a gaming laptop. For example, I was unable to install Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 on that 500 gig hard drive along with all the other software programs that I need, so you would need to expand with a second hard di disk drive as I did or you would need to upgrade the existing shorter M.2 HDD with at least one terabyte, preferably more. That's if you want to play big games like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Microsoft Flight Simulator 24 might well be smaller and less problematic. There are many big games about these days and 500 gig simply isn't enough. So I tend to buy a laptop which suits my needs and then I hold on to it and look after it very well. In my lifetime, this is the third laptop that I've owned, and the first two, which I still have and still work perfectly and are still used, well, within the context of their limitations, they have lasted me for 10 years and 20 years respectively. So any questions you have, please do let me know and I'll do my best to answer. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you found this review useful, and definitely keep your eyes open for a good deal on the Lenovo Legion 5i. I think you could probably pick one of these up, a 15 inch monitor, for, uh, for under £700, maybe even under £650. Um, so uh, yeah, definitely a very capable uh, gaming laptop that you should definitely invest your time and efforts into finding. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care. Goodbye for now.